I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, so here I have one of these power supplies out of the uh, Dell Autoplex 390 system. Uh, it's a chickeny power, 265 watt OEM unit. It's the original OEM unit. And I have a whole batch of these units that uh, will provide 5 volt standby, but they will not actually power up. And when you go to press this button, which is actually tied directly to the PS on lead on this connector. Uh, when you go to press that, which um, would be the equivalent of the computer trying to turn on the system by uh, connecting this green wire to ground, the power supply does not actually start up. It tries to. Um, the fan does not twitch, um, but you'll hear a really brief noise um, it's almost as if there's a short circuit or something. Um, and maybe the uh, short circuit protection is uh, kicking it off. But it's weird. Um, usually, I would think when the short protection activates, um, you would have to reset the unit by unplugging it from power, and letting it discharge to the point where the 5 volt standby uh, cuts off and resets the IC, and you plug it back in, then you should be able to... Uh, start it back up but um, you press this button you'll hear, hear a really faint um, noise like a hissing noise and that's pretty much it um, some of these units do have uh, failing capacitors on the secondary I've recapped one with uh, fresh capacitors and it's doing pretty much the same thing as before I did notice however that when it tries to start up you you will get like 300 millivolts for a brief moment on the 12 volt rail which is not even enough to twitch the fan but it's a sign the unit is like trying to start um, so I'm in here in this lab today um, we got this variable power supply here um, and the thing about it is it's current limiting so you can adjust the voltage to however you want it um, from 0 to like 30 volts 32 volts something like that um, yeah, 32 volts it says right there. I got it set to like three volts. Um, just a voltage that's low enough to test all the uh, outputs, but not enough to blow in the capacitors. You gotta be careful about that. Um, like for example, if you always just set this to 12 volts and you connect it to the 3.3 volt rail, you could blow some capacitors in this unit because uh, the capacitors on the 3.3 volt rail or the 5 volt rail could be 10 volt rated capacitors or 6.3 volt rated capacitors and not 16 volt rated capacitors like what you have on the 12 volt rail. So again, this variable power supply um, is current limiting and I got it set down really low on the current where only like 250 milliamps can pass. So that way if there's a short, I would know about it. Um, I've got one lead, I got the negative lead connected to uh, the chance of the power supply to act as a uh, as a common and I've got this lead of course I'll be t touching the 3.3 the 5 volts and the 12 volts with it um, to see what happens and pretty much what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if there's a short on the output of this unit uh, maybe there's a shorted capacitor or something like that who knows so we're going to start this up You can see I had the power set to three, or the voltage set to three volts. Current is limited to really low. If like, for example, I'll short it and you'll see um, 250 milliamps. You can see the light changes over to constant current from constant voltage. Another fun fact is you can use this exact kind of power supply to charge a lithium ion battery cell because it works in pretty much the same fashion. So I'm going to briefly touch the yellow lead which is um, I think 12 volt A. This unit has two 12 volt rails. So I'm going to touch it and watch what happens. You can see we don't have a short. You may have seen we had a brief spike in current. That was the capacitor charging up. The capacitors on the output of this unit were charging up. And you can see we're drawing about 30 milliamps. The reason why we're drawing a little bit of power is because 
switch mode power supplies have dummy load resistors on their outputs because these power supplies there must be some load on them in order to start so again I'll touch it again you can see this time about you know, um, 30 to 40 milliamps and I'll go and take it off and watch what happens again you can see there's a brief spike that's the capacitor charging up see the capacitors will discharge through that dummy load resistor now I'm going to do the 3.3 uh, volt rail we got about uh, 60 milliamps there you see we don't have a short the uh, again if we had a short circuit the uh, power supply would current limit which is not even anywhere near that point so that's 3.3 We'll do the 5 volt, 40 milliamps. Again, that's because of the dummy load resistors. Let's try the other 12 volt output. So yeah, uh, the unit does not appear to have short circuits on its output, uh, many shorts. Now this one, of course I should mention it was not even plugged in. So we don't need to plug into a, to a power source for this. Um, this one may or may not have bulging caps in it. I can't remember which one this was. Of course, I'm filming with my phone, which in a way my phone actually takes a little bit better video than my actual camera does. That I normally use for the channel. So... Trying to see, it's kind of hard to see in there, but uh, this one may or may not have some bulging caps. It's trying to, you can see inside unit there a little bit. Yeah, the capacitors are like over there. It's kind of hard to see. So again, I have like, I want to say four to six of these units that are exhibiting the exact same problem. And I thought maybe a simple recap would have fixed one, but I tried recapping one one with a fresh, brand new capacitors, and that did not. That again did not fix the problem. So yeah, I'm curious, guys, um, if anybody who's ever worked on one of these, who's, who's ever tried to fix one of these, what was the issue? Because I'm curious. I'd hate to just scrap all these units because they're actually not too bad. Um, otherwise, I mean, they're active PFC. Um, they're built pretty well. I mean, I've seen better. I mean, I just did a video comparing a different OEM uh, power supply for one of these model computers, and it was a little bit better built. But, I mean, this one's not terrible by any means. But it does seem like this particular unit has some sort of uh, failure in it that causes it to not want to start up. Um, again, it will provide 5 volt standby, and that's it. Um, you try to start it, it won't start. That's one of the ways, I guess I, I guess I can say it's one of the ways I ended up with so many of these Ultra Black 390s is because so many of them had bad power supplies. So anyways, um, what do y'all think about this? Feel free to leave a comment. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.